when the hibiscus flower of Nigeria shipment was banned in Mexico, infestation was the reason. Small, small, tiny insects were found in the container when the container was opened, and they. Good day, my name is Delia Yimbo, and you are welcome to another edition of Sharing Trade Information on DBA TV. This is a, a channel where we discuss everything international trade, and today we'll continue the conversation we started recently, uh, where we're discussing issue around exporting different items out of Nigeria. If you are just joining us for the first time, we have discussed how to export cocoa out of Nigeria. We have discussed how to export raw cashew out of Nigeria. We have discussed how to export sesame seed out of Nigeria. We have discussed how to export dry flea ginger. We have discussed gum arabic. In today's edition, we are going to be discussing hibiscus flour. In today's edition, we'll be discussing hibiscus flour. If you are familiar with hibiscus flour, you know it's a dry uh, product that uh, basically help to be able to um, that is used for tea it is a flour of course as the name implies it's a flour a flour that is used for tea and of course used for a number of other uh, uh, function or other benefits um, it's actually called hibiscus sardarifa <laughs> because belong to the family of Malvasia, talking about the botanical name now, um, it's an annual herb cultivated for its leaf, stem, seed, and calyces. Now, in Nigeria, they call it zobo. <laughs> they call it zobo. Now, remember in this uh, particular video, we always talk about, about seven important areas. We talk about the product specification. Remember, we're discussing how to export it. Product specification that the buyer is looking at the potential market size you should be conscious of, the purchaser, the countries that buy, uh, the prices and how the uh, uh, um, product specification affect prices, the problem you likely encounter when you're shipping, the packaging requirement, and of course, the paperwork. So let's delve into the specification. Remember, we are still going into commodity. We are going to go to mineral very soon and then go to finished goods. Now, if you look at this, it's commodities, right? Just like every other commodity, there are some concerns. Concern of foreign matter. Concern of moisture. Moisture should be 5% maximum. Uh, total ash, about 10% maximum. Acid insoluble ash, about 1.5% maximum. Broken sticks inside, maximum of 5%. Foreign matters, 2%. Salmonella should be negative. Salmonella should be negative. Salmonella is bacteria. It should be negative. It should be negative because that shows that the product itself is not in infected. So what is the total market size in terms of demand, in terms of import for a biscuit flour? It's not so much, actually, even though Nigeria do a lot of it. You know, sometimes when I look at also what Nigeria focused on, sometimes you ask yourself, are we, we need to get to that point that we are, uh, we are, we now are strategic in things we do. For example, Ibiscus flower was banned by Mexico and government did a lot to restore it, which is okay. But the issue is the market size for dry flour, Ibiscus flour is very small. Total market size is less than a billion. $609 million. $609 million. So who are the major buyers? Europeans. Europeans are the major buyers. Europeans are the major buyers. $573 million demand in Europe. $573 million demand in Europe. Uh, North America, Nigeria ship a lot to Mexico. It's just about $70 million demand in North America. Nigeria do a lot of shipment to Mexico. When I mean a lot of shipment, maybe two, three, four, five, six, seven million dollars to Mexico. Uh, about $54 million demand in Asia. About uh, $6 million demand in Oceania. And about 
3.4 million dollar demand in Africa and about 1.4 million dollar demand in South America. Who are those buying? Out of the 609 million dollars, who are those buying? France. So you can ship to France. You can ship. France is 13 percent, 13.3. Netherlands 13.2. Belgium 6.8.64. Uh, Denmark 6.86. Uh, Germany 6.07, United States 10.1%, United Kingdom 4.47%, Spain 3.31%. These are major markets in the world demanding for this product. Major market in the world demanding for this product. Now, remember we talk about pricing. I'll remind you again, the reason why I'm mentioning pricing in this program is if for any reason, if for any reason, your moisture is not up to what it should be, the impurity is too much, or there is any specification the buyer has for you're not getting, most likely there will be a deduction in the price. That's why most contracts for commodities, they will not give you full price. They will not give you the full payment, rather. Most price money, they will not give you the full payment. They will give you maybe 60, 70, 80, sometimes 90%, and pay the buyer, uh, pay the balance upon arrival to be able to ensure if there is any issue, particular with the quality, that will be deducted from the price. Now, how should you package it? You need to get an airtight packaging material. It's also important that you ensure that the material also is transparent enough for people to be able to see what is inside, particularly if you are packing, you know, because if you are packaging this course, it's not just in the PP bag, big PP bag for bulk shipment. People also buy in small pack. So putting a little transparent there will help. Labeling is very important. In, for large shipment, use bulk packaging material like jute bag, PP bag. Ensure this packaging material are properly sealed to prevent contamination. It's also important you protect it from sun rays, sunlight, UV resistant and opaque material is preferable for you to protect the product inside. Because it's flat and it can break, it's very important you pack it in such a way that there is coaching to ensure that they, you don't make the fragile flower to break up and make it become broken as much as possible. Now, what are the likely problems? If you are trying to export this product, what are the likely problems you will likely encounter if you are exporting these products? Talking about hibiscus flowers. Number one is foreign matter and debris inside. Foreign matter and debris inside. The presence of foreign matter and death in dry hibiscus flower is a problem you need to be very, very conscious of. Also remember the issue of moisture because it can lead to growth of mold. It can lead to discoloration and it can lead to reduced shelf life. And it can lead to reduced shelf life. Insect infestation. In fact, when this hibiscus flower of Nigeria shipment was banned in Mexico, infestation was the reason. Small, small, tiny insects were found in the container when the container was opened. And they sent a lot of um, requests to Nigeria for that to stop. And it seems as if it didn't. And then they had to ban. And then now they have come to have to work with us to set up a better way to ensure the product are well packaged, are well warehoused, to ensure this does not repeat itself again. And lastly is paperwork. If you are shipping this product, always remember. If you are shipping this product, always remember. Apart from the pre-export document, NXP, export certificate and the like, and the CCI uh, FGD that you get from custom, and the shipping document bill of lading invoice and packing list that you will use. In addition, is the third party inspection document. In addition, is the fumigation certificate. And of course, phytosanitary certificate.
If this video has been of benefit to you, give it a thumbs up. If you have a friend that must hear about it before you do the shipment of that hibiscus flower, <laughs> share with your friends. More importantly, more importantly, if you have a question, drop that question in the comment box. If you want to get to know what Ness will be talking about, do you know what Ness will be talking about? Do you have an idea what Ness is talking about? The next discussion we'll be having is on granite. If you want to be part of the discussion on granite, then click on notification bell. Join our community by subscribing. My name is Delia Yemibo, and I'm your expert doctor, and I'm signing out.